Not far from Stroud lies the little Gloucestershire village of Slad. It's small and easy to miss, but buried here is one of Britain's great literary heroes. Here in the village churchyard lies Laurie Lee, writer of the well-known autobiography Cider with Rosie. It's the memoirs of his childhood whilst growing up in this wonderful rural community in the 1920s. And central to the novel is a young village girl called Rosie, who he drinks cider with underneath a hay wagon and eventually ends up encountering one of his first romantic experiences. So successful was the novel that it went on to sell six million copies, eventually being adapted for television and radio. There was something so compelling about the story that captured the reader's imagination. And it all started here in 1917, when Laurie Lee was just three years old. And the opening paragraph from the book reads like this. I was sat down from the carrier's cart at the age of three. And there, with a sense of bewilderment and terror, my life in the village began. The dune grass amongst which I stood was taller than I was, and I wept. I had never been so close to grass before. Having enjoyed his childhood here, Laurie left for London at the age of 19. Whilst away, he wrote the first of what would become three autobiographies. Some of the buildings that still remain in the village make an appearance in Cider with Rosie. Like the old schoolhouse here, which is now a private home. But somehow you can just imagine the screams of laughter that would have once broken the countryside silence. Laurie's own thoughts on his former school were captured in a documentary he made for the BBC in 1960. I had to look into the village school, of course. It's where all of us went in those days. The present crop were far prettier and tidier. Yet behind their round, well-nourished faces, I felt I could see the ghosts of several of those sharp urchins I'd known in my old days. Another famous landmark in the book is this pub, the Woolpack. In his later years, Laurie spent many a happy time here, and he's well remembered by Barbara Hooper, who shares lots of memories with him. And shortly after he died, she wrote his biography. Barbara has agreed to tell me a little more about Laurie. Naturally, over a glass of cider. He was a lovely man. People took to him immediately. He was very warm and gregarious and made you feel very comfortable with him. He was also a great tease who never quite knew what to believe what he said. He was an educated man. Well, he spoke like an educated man. He, he loved art, he loved music, he liked the finer things in life. Educated, um, self-educated rather. He was very talented as musician, as photographer, mm as writer, obviously, mm. um, and artist. He sketched, too. Was he a Lothario? Was he a real ladies' man, or was that just sort of speculation? His eyes would light up when a pretty woman came into the room. He never missed that. And whenever he met them, he would be very, um, very much attracted to any yeah. good-looking woman that he met. Yeah. What about Rosie? Was she fictitious? Well, he said to me, when we were talking here in this very pub, oh, she was a compound of several people. And elsewhere I read that he said she was someone, she was anyone, she was no one. Oh, really? So it's, it's hard to, to believe what, then, really? Mm. A number of people have laid claim yeah. to having been the original Rosie, and there's some half a dozen turned up at a, an event in the uh, subscription rooms in Stroud. And when somebody on the stage said, are there any people here who think they might have been Rosie? Six people stood up. <laughs> But I think she was indeed. After all, he was writing this book 40 years after the events, he mm. describes. Mm. And so I think he was a number of little schoolgirls he remembered. I held the jar to my mouth and rolled my eyes sideways, like a beast at a water hole. Go on, said Rosie. I took a deep breath. Never to be forgotten, that first long secret drink of golden fire, juice of those valleys, and at that time, wine of wild orchards, of russet summer, of plump red apples, and Rosie's burning cheeks. Never to be forgotten or ever tasted again. What was the magic of Cider with Rosie? Oh, I think it was nostalgia. It struck a chord with many people, either because they said it reminded them of their own childhood in the 20s and 30s. The round of village life, the carol singing at Christmas, the harvest supper, the fete, or because they didn't know what rural poverty was like. Very few people had written about growing up in an extremely poor part of the country, as Gloucestershire was at that time. 
Selling six million copies of his book, I mean, that's quite an accolade, isn't it, really? Mm. Did the success ever go to his head? I would say not. He uh, always said that it sold well initially because it was Christmas and there was nothing else to, to buy, buy but bath salts. <laughs> Um, I don't think it went to his head, no, and here at home I think he remained very much the lorry that they, they'd known when he was young. As well as the school and pub, another centrepiece of cider with Rosie is this house. Whilst his father remained in London after the First World War, this is where he moved to with his mother from Stroud. It's one of the most read-about cottages in Gloucestershire, and it was here that Lee spent 16 years of his life. There it was, the place where I was brought up, together with six rowdy brothers and sisters. Just the same, except for a new tiled roof. Of course, I felt I'd never left it. I kept expecting my mother to lean out of a window and brandish a saucepan at me. But it was a good place to be. It was once a beer house. It got flooded whenever it rained. It had no gas or electricity. We cooked on wood fires and went to bed by the lights of candles. It had thick, snug walls, Rooks in the chimneys, frogs in the cellars, mushrooms on the ceiling, and all for three and sixpence a week. And it was there we all grew till we ran away or got married. None of us live there now. Sadly, Laurie died in 1997, aged 83, and he lies here in the valley that he loved. And at his own request, between the church and the pub you can see down there that he often frequented and adored. But his books do live on for us to enjoy and they remain powerfully evocative. Back now to our valuation day in Stroud.